Yo, 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 plant parents, what's up? Have you ever heard someone saying that plants in your bedroom are not recommended because they apparently take away oxygen and you will die during the night? Well, I did and it got me worried. But anyway, that's why I decided that I will make this video to see if that's true or not. Hi, and welcome to Greentopia. My name is Maya and I'm a plant addict. And as I mentioned before, I've heard this myth that plants apparently take uh, oxygen during the night while you are sleeping. So in your bedroom, it's not very recommended that you have a lot of plants. Mm, I was a little bit like, hmm, well, I have a lot of plants in my bedroom, so I don't really like this news and I need to check if it's true because I don't just believe everything that everybody says or everything that's on internet. And I really like to do my research and, you know, trust science and you should too. Don't trust the fake news. It turns out that plants are actually amazing creatures, in case you didn't know that before. But I'm guessing since you are a plant parent, you already know that. So during the day, plants all over the planet produce oxygen because they do this um, amazing process that's called uh, photosynthesis, which I'm sure everybody learned about at school. Um, it means that during the day, they actually take the carbon dioxide from the air and they produce oxygen. Um, and that is what happens uh, during the day. But what I didn't know before, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, is that during the night, this process actually kind of uh, turns in another direction. And what plants do is actually they consume the oxygen that they produce. So here comes the big question. Does it then mean that they are really taking the air which we breathe and we need to compete with it? Well, yeah and no. And I would say we can all be safe that we are not going to die because during the night they actually consume so little of the oxygen in comparison to what they produce that it's very, very, um, that it's almost not worth to mention. And even during the day, plants actually produce 10 times more oxygen than they actually consume during the night. Also, we need to keep in mind that humans in comparison to plants especially or specifically indoor plants that we usually have in our homes we consume much much more oxygen and having one or two plants in your room it's actually not even worth mentioning in terms of how much oxygen they produce or even consume you would need to have like i don't know 50 plants in your room that it would maybe be even worth you know checking out because even from the scientific point of view, we know approximately how much uh, each person, how much oxygen we consume, which is around 550 liters per day. But for the plants, it's a little bit more tricky because they don't actually know. And also it completely depends on the type of plant, on the size of plant. Some plants grow faster, uh, thus they produce more oxygen in, in, in general. And some plants, they grow a little bit slower, meaning that they also produce less oxygen. And it also depends how much oxygen they produce based on how well the how much light they get during the day, in how much what kind of nutrition you have in your soil, how you treat them. So basically, even if you have one plant and you would want to kind of figure out how much oxygen they produce, it would be a little bit tricky because it depends on the on all these different um, criteria. So basically, it's it's kind of hard to to determine. But anyhow, I think we are all now a little bit more calmer and we know that no, we are not competing with our plants uh, for the air, for the oxygen during the night. And yes, it's totally safe to have plants in your room. You're welcome. So after finding out this fact, I was super happy that I can still have my plants in my room and that we can live happily ever after. But then it also got me thinking and questioning, okay, so What's the deal with all these, you know, articles and recommendations, how amazing plants are because they can purify air. So then you would ask, hey, Maya, is this also a myth? And have I been, you know, misled and reading fake news? Well, actually, no. But on the other hand, as I mentioned before, the impact that plants have on our lives is not as significant as we might maybe like to think. Yes, they and some plants, they do produce and purify not produce, but purify the air from, from toxic chemicals that, that are present in our homes. 
Um, but again, we always need to keep in mind that it completely depends on the amount or number of plants that we have. So if you will have one snake plant in your in your apartment and you will claim that it totally purifies purifies your air, it would be fake news. So please don't do that. Uh, you know, do a little research before and uh, yeah, just know your plants. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, plants are amazing. They have uh, amazing benefits that we that we can have from them in in our daily lives but also we need to be realistic because as i said before we all appreciate and love science so anyhow if you decide that okay i don't care what my says i really want to have plants that uh, purify my air go ahead and do it it's not gonna you know it's not gonna do you any harm or anyone else so by all means go and buy all the all those amazing plants that are puri pur purifying your air just don't expect that it will be, you know, a big, big difference when when you will have them at home. But anyhow, um, a little bit on this topic, I also did some research just so that I could be more helpful. And I made a list of five plants that are known to be able to purify air. Um, so I'm just going to tell them to you and then we're going to go a little bit into the topic. What kind of chemicals are you talking about, Maya? So these plants are... And they are all very common plants that you can find in your garden center, so it shouldn't be a problem of finding them. So the first one I picked is aloe vera. Um, I'm sure everybody knows it. It's a succulent plant. It's very easy to care for. It grows pretty fast. Um, and it all, it's also known for its other um, benefits, like uh, from the nutrition point of view, from medical point of view. So it's super useful um, to have it at home. And it also looks nice. Um, the second one is what in English we call the snake plant. And the scientific uh, name is Sanseveria. Um, it's a pretty usual or very common plant. In my personal opinion, I don't like it so much. Um, I don't have one at home, but I've seen I've seen it in many, many homes and it's very common. Um, so that plant apparently also purifies air. Um, then the third one on my list was Pothos, which is also a very common one. It grows pretty, pretty fast and it's also a delight to have at home because it's a wine. So meaning that when you when you have it and when it grows, you can, you know, have it all over your apartment um, if you don't if you don't cut it. So that's the, the third one. Um, then I have the Chlorophytum comosum, which I'm sorry, I just needed to have some notes because this was a really complicated name. But uh, with the English name, we know it under spider plant. It's also not one of my favorite, but it's very abundant and it grows very fast. So it's also very nice plant for for the for the new plant parents. It's easy to care for. Um, and the last one on my list is also one of my favorites, and it's Ficus benjamin. Um, so all these plants are known for their purifying um, abilities. But as I say, keep in mind that it's not one plant is not going to make a difference. It's not going to be significant in your flat, but you know. You could at least say to your friends that, yeah, I have these plants and they're purifying my hair. Anyhow, let's get back to, to the fact that what chemicals we have in our flats, because everybody likes to believe that, you know, we are super conscious about what we buy and how we live. And of course, everybody wants to be healthy. Um, and even when I was doing this research, I was a little bit surprised. But now I'm um, very happy that I a little, that I am a little bit more aware because apparently in a lot of products that um, we have in our house, there are chemicals like um, like benzene, like formaldehyde and different others, which I don't remember. Um, but they come in very different products that you bring to your home. Like, for example, paint for the walls or if you have any furniture from wood, which is treated, um, then if you use any pesticides for your plants, hopefully more of a natural origin, but in case you are using um, the ones that you can, the common ones in the garden centers, a lot of times they are very toxic, as well as cleaning products, for example. I know a lot of us hopefully are conscious about these things, but if not, you should know that, you know, a lot of times we are not aware of what we are bringing to our homes. So, you know, maybe this, um, this video will help you to think about these things more. I know it started as a as a debunking a myth about purifying air plants and do plants take our oxygen away from us but i hope that it has been useful nevertheless so thanks for listening and watching today's video i hope you find it useful if you did 
Um, I would be super uh, well, super happy if you would share it with your family and friends. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and give me a like if you if you appreciated the video. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you and have a nice day, plant parents. Ciao.